Welcome everyone to the Amherst Design Review Board meeting of May 20th, 2024. My name is Erica Zikos and I'm the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board and I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I will take roll call. When I call your name, please unmute yourself, answer in the affirmative. Uh, Lindsay Schnarr, not present. Karen Winter? Here. Pat Ott? Present. Karen Blum, not able to join us tonight. And Eric Zikos, that's me, present. Uh, board members, if technical issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problems and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your request and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to unmute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comment regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware that the board will not respond to comments during the general public comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when determined appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raised hand button when public comment is solicited. If you've joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when you're finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be discontinued from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes the following. We'll have general public comment period and then review applications. And we've got 2024-19 uh, from the town of Amherst uh, to review the public loo at Kendrick Park. Uh, item 20, J.D. Ross and J.D. Builders at M&T Bank, and item 21 from Dagmar Amherst for um, Patio, a new restaurant. Um, we'll have approval of meeting minutes to follow and then uh, other business not anticipated within 24 or 48 hours. Um, and I will say that there has been a request to uh, change the order of tonight's um, applicants um, and to have uh, Dagmar Amherst uh, item 21 go first. I think that that sounds reasonable. Um, so with uh, hopes that that is uh, all right where everyone present, um, we'll step into general public comment period if there's anybody who would like to share a comment for the DRB, let us know. Use the raise hand function or press star nine. Okay, there's a JD Ross that would like to speak. Hello. Hi, JD Ross. <laughs> yeah, um, I have to be, I'm on the member of the Weight League Finance Committee and I have a meeting at six o'clock. So as long as I can still get to my meeting by six o'clock, I should be fine with changing the order. Thank you, I appreciate that. I appreciate your flexibility. We will get you out of here by six o'clock. Thank you. We'll have you go second. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so why don't we get started with um, item 21, uh, representatives from uh, Dagmar Amherst and Patio. Okay, that is um, Dylan Barstow Mans and um, Liz Larson is Liz part of that project as well? Hi, Dylan, please. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Liz is is not a part of it, no. Okay. Me tonight. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. So Dylan, we have your, the, we have the 
documents that you submitted and I'm happy to do screen share or to let you do that if you prefer. Let us know. Uh, you, yeah, I have the uh, the presentation up as well. I can share the screen. Fantastic. Why don't you walk us through it? Um, it looks like someone might have to I, authorize me. I believe I have to upgrade him. Oh, okay. To Thank a panelist. How about now, Dylan? Does it work? Hi, everyone. Uh, th thanks for having me move up early. It's a, It should be a brief uh, brief presentation, uh, and I appreciate being able to get back to my family on vacation. So let me jump right into it. Um, so you all heard our presentation back in uh, fall of 2022. Uh, that was for the concept uh, Dagmar. Uh, we've since in that time opened up protocol. Um, we have learned a lot um, from our uh, now a little over a year of operating protocol. Um, and some of the updates to patio kind of reflects what we've what we've learned trying to create um, great downtown gathering spaces for uh, the people of Amherst and people visiting Amherst. So uh, the biggest thing is the change of name. We've changed from Dagmar to patio. Um, 26 Spring Street also, uh, completed and was delivered uh, after the original design review board presentation. Um, and if anyone has been able to see that project, the uh, the patio space is uh, really phenomenal. It came out really great. Um, there's large monolithic granite, um, some uh, benches. Um, it sits a little bit above the sidewalk. So it's a really beautiful um, piece of the space. And uh, we wanted to kind of call it out as it's kind of the feature point of the space. So um, one of the requests, which I'll, I'll go through here, is, is basically changing the name from Dagmar to Patio. And we're going to put the locations of the sign in the same location on the doors. Uh, but I assume since the name was changing, um, I should just go back to your board and confirm that that's all OK to do. Um, so. Going through, this is what 26 Spring looks like. The red box highlights the uh, retail space. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Dylan, we're not actually seeing your screen. Oh, oh here, try now. Uh, let's hang on. Um, um, give me give me one second, okay? Yep. Because it's different when... Um... Oh, okay. Try that. Are you able to? One second. It looks like uh it looks like on my end I don't have uh the app allowing me to uh share the screen. Uh it's I asking me to quit and reopen. I don't know if uh I want to lose connection with, with y'all. So maybe if it's okay, Erica, you could share for me. Yeah, why don't why don't we do that? And then you can you. uh direct me around. So I'll okay. quick flash through what you've sent. Hopefully that looks familiar. So this is the uh, the update to the the logo. It's a simple font, uh, calling out patio. Um, we want something that was uh, kind of elegant and timeless, um, easy to read. And so this is this is what we settled on with our um, our brand suite of people. Uh, and going through the next photos, it kind of calls out. Um, this is Twenty Six Spring Street, and that's the retail space in the red box. Um, you go to uh, the next slide, we can see um, kind of a side profile view. And then the very next sl sh slide shows like a, uh, a direct head on view. So you can kind of see the patio off to the left hand side. Um, and there's a, a it's a little bit elevated off the sidewalk. Um, we think it'll be a really great gathering spot outdoors. Um, and uh, that's kind of why we changed from Dagmar to patio. So if we go to the, the next slide. Um, this is kind of the, the layout, uh, looking at it about almost, uh, probably 30% of, uh, seating spaces or, uh, available spaces outside. So it kind of pushes people, uh, to the outdoor space. Um, we've learned from protocol, um, we are getting two types of, uh, people. We were getting very large groups, people coming with eight to 15 uh, people meeting up with friends, meeting up with family, going out with faculty staff, celebrating occasions. And so we kind of wanted to make the pivot both indoors to um, eight top seating in the middle. 
uh, and then also like a picnic bench on the outside um, so people can kind of gather and talk. And then the other type of group we've been seeing is actually um, just single or individual people. Um, and so we wanted to chronic, kind of create intimate moments along the perimeter of the interior um, where people can kind of pivot the bar stools to one another, but still be able to look out the window and see the back of Grace Church and the Inn on Boltwood. Um, and uh, yeah, if we go to the next slide, we can see the picnic benches that we have. Um, we're, we found a local producer that can uh, put together Douglas fir picnic benches that stand well to the outside, um, nice and heavy. Um, so they stay there with the patio. Um, and we wanted to provide some shade protection. Um, and we found these uh, high wind umbrellas, which can uh, withstand 45 mile per hour winds. Um, in any event that's too windy, we don't anticipate using them, but uh, in the event of a gust, uh, we wanted to find something that was kind of robust and could uh, be safe on the premise. And so it would come with a uh, weighted base um, and it would go in the middle of the picnic bench. And so the color of the umbrellas that we settled on was pistachio. The We thought the green would look really nice, kind of blend in with foliage um, and provide that outdoor um, experience. And so the biggest changes were the uh, was the out, that outdoor um, furniture, which I wanted to run by y'all, um, the picnic bench and the umbrella and the umbrella color. Uh, and then the next slide down is the sign uh, locations. There's two doors uh, enter and exit on uh, on the in the, the the bar. And so we would put a, a sign across the front door that's about 18 inches by nine inches tall. Uh, we'd use uh, black kind of vinyl material to press onto the door. Um, and then in the upper right-hand corner, um, we would put a larger patio uh, that'd be about 48 inches um, by 24 inches um, as it kind of it kind of peaks up towards uh, the common. Uh, that face right there on patio is facing west. So um, it's right above the patio seating area. So you would have kind of that as a backdrop. Um, and yeah, and that's, pretty much it for the presentation. I figured I'd uh, turn it over to you all for questions and hopefully I can answer all, all of your questions. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I do have a few questions and I'll, I'll kick things off just by asking about um, whether the picnic tables are the only outside furniture. There seems to be a good deal of space on the patio that I know that this is a, a ramp, but I, I think that's true. Yeah, um, that's a ramp up. There's a good deal of space that's not being furnished, and I'm wondering whether the this the tables are it. Uh, the the tables the tables are it. The uh, the front portion, as you mentioned, the um, sorry, the left hand side that is a ramp, so we want to keep that for for egress. Uh, and then the front section um, is actually smaller than it really appears. We tried to um, in our original presentation, we wanted to put chairs out front there. Um, and just the, the walking space is not really wide enough. So we, um, we don't really have anything there. And then on the diagram that you have pulled up the front section there with all the, um, smaller, yeah, that's all planting. So there'll be, um, little bushes in there as well. So, uh, we weren't able to use that space. Okay. Thanks for so clarifying that. I, I just want to say, I think that the, as, as usual from you guys, the, you know, the, the font and style choices, I think, are are lovely. But I will seed the seed the floor. Chris, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was wondering about that bench that goes along the wall. Is that going to be a place where people can sit and be served? Yes. Yeah, that bench was uh, a part of the uh, original uh, apartment development. Um, and yeah, that would be open for people to use if if they would like. Um, it's not a movable bench. Um, but we wouldn't be putting any sort of tables or anything with it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, Pat or Karen, do you have any questions or, or comments for Mr. Barstow? Yes. Um, yeah, I could jump in. I, I agree. The font is exactly as you said, timeless and elegant and beautiful patio. I, I like that very much. Uh, I welcome this as an outdoor place. I have no idea. Are you serving food here? And uh, is this a little restaurant? Is, 
It's yeah, it's good. It's going to be a uh, a cocktail bar, uh, and we'll have um, the plan for food is uh, ramekins that are a mixture of nuts, olives, other small um, edibles. We don't have any sort of kitchen here. There's no. Um, I see. I see. So it's mostly. I see. Okay. Well, that's great. Yeah. It looks. It looks very nice. Um, interesting. The decision to have the three big tables and and basically you're either in a crowd or you're alone <laughs> we'll see <laughs> but yeah, I we've, like it. we've uh with protocol we have the two large um eight eight person top tables and we've seen uh it's been really fun we kind of thought those were going to be the least desirable seats and they've turned into uh, one of the first items to go. And we've seen mixtures where people come and sit as a group and we've seen um, individual parties kind of mingle that way. It's been really nice to see um, uh, that space get utilized in a way that we weren't anticipating, but it's uh, really great for the space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I, I, my, my only comment is you, you have it handicap accessible mm -hmm. um, and the ends of the tables outside would solve that problem for anyone who was in a wheelchair or um, had mobility problems. It might be more difficult for somebody to sit at a picnic table with those issues. But it seems to me that in the interior, the tables have chairs. Mm -hmm. So that, that would solve that problem. Um, just a comment. But I, I do um, I, I do like the font for your patio. I think Pat, that's you, handsome. I'm going to ask you to clarify, Pat, because I'm not sure what the problem is. They're, the entire space is accessible. Yes, but I think someone who has mobility problems would have difficulty sitting at a picnic table. I see. The, the, except for the, the end spots, perhaps. Except for the end spots, if, if a chair could be brought or they were in a wheelchair. But I see in the interior, the tables have chairs and and end spots open. And so um, that that kind of resolves the issue so that everybody could have access one way or the other. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. I just want to make sure that we we're oh, sure. hearing Sorry. you because I think it's an important issue. Sorry um, about that. No worries. Um, I wanted to raise up a couple of things. Um, Douglas fir, it it lasts and as long as you're taking care of it. Um, yeah, we, right, we would have them, like an annual have them seal it. Plan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, that would be uh, critical for comfort. Um, and I'm I just wanted to raise up whether you considered using a um, a lighter color for your vinyl letters. I worry that the especially when the lights aren't on during the day, that the black um, on the background will be really difficult to see because if it's dark inside, then windows are often reflective. Um, and if you have considered doing a, a white or even the pistachio or something um, for your, your vinyl letters so that it's visible. Uh, I think the black, the black we went with because we really haven't um, decided on a, uh, color pattern palette to go with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't. I don't know if we would how we would go about or when we would determine that. But I think for, for right now, the black that we've we've picked is is kind of the direction we were going with. I think if there's a, a color change, um, if anything, I don't. I don't know if we would go. The black just seems to be. It was seems to be kind of the uh the easiest kind of fades a little bit into the the space i know that's uh i don't know a little into we, we haven't really thought about it but black <laughs> yeah. was kind of the, the direction we went yeah i think the, the black is very elegant on paper on a white background but i worry that it'll be lost to us on uh on the glass especially when passing by during the day if the lights are on at night you'll likely see it because there'll be a contrast but during the daytime when it's darker on the interior windows tend to appear darker right <laughs> so yep. basically black on black and so it might not have the might not get the visibility that you're after so mm -hmm. i would consider that's a good point using um if you don't have a color scheme and you would consider white then that might serve you better i mean 
I think we'd be, yeah, we'd be open to that. I think, um, uh, I just hesitate to pick a, a color right now, other than what the ar architect already drew on the plan. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if, if we change the color, uh, we would have to come back and get approval, correct? I think that we'd be willing to approve it tonight with with black and, and, and encourage you to test uh, a white. I, I that would be the, that would be what I would approve. <laughs> that's what I would suggest to the DRB. I don't want to speak for others on the board, but um, that's what I would encourage you to do. And we would approve either way. But I think that you'll be doing yourself a service if you in the next couple of days just look around at vinyl lettering on on various unlit windows. I appreciate that. I'd be, I'd be open to that. And I do agree if the, the white works out, I think white or black would be the two directions we'd go. Sure. And then if white was looking better, your point about the dark glass being dark during uh, no interior lighting is does make sense uh, and did not consider that originally. So it would be great if we could try that and then pick what works works well to kind of call out the space the best. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other comments? All right, could I um, entertain a, a motion to approve the proposal for patio with the suggestion that the um, Mr. Barstow con consider using white letters for his window vinyl? Yeah, I so move, Zachary. Second, Pat? Second. Appreciate it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, guys. When will you be opening? <laughs> that's always the that's <laughs> always the follow-up question. As as soon as possible. We're trying to get the oyster bar uh going right now. Um yeah. Uh, right now, the oyster bar is looking like end of July. It might slip into beginning of August, but definitely oysters before the fall, uh, which we're, it's been a long time coming. Uh, and then we're going to turn our attention to patio probably uh, in July with with Ernest, and that'll be the focus. And this is much simpler than oyster bar, which was going through two single family homes and finding layers of rot and and issues and also easier than protocol because protocol was a much larger space, and we did a um, we chose some paths that were more difficult than, uh, we understood. So <laughs> we're, we're smarter now and hopefully <laughs> quicker. So well, we're really excited for you. Thank you. It's a great, it is a great patio space. So thank you. Enjoy your vacation. Right. Bye now. <laughs> thank you. All right. So I guess we can move on then to, um, M and T bank, uh, JD Ross is presenting. Am I still screen sharing? I am sorry about that. Hello? Hi, JD Ross. Is, yeah. is that how we should refer to you? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> and um, would you like to screen share and walk us through your presentation or would you like me to do that for you? I don't have the ability to screen share. All right, let me find the right documents and I will do that. Hang on one second. Um, hold on, I got it. Maybe. I have a lot of documents open. Aha, okay, here it is. All right. All right, so here, this is your information. So that, yeah. yeah, so the, the bank has night drops for, you know, companies and bars and restaurants to make night deposits. And I, the previous picture shows a picture of one I just installed in, in Wilmington, Vermont. Um, there was the picture of the red building right there. That's the night drop. We installed what the exact same model, the sister of this one in Wilmington, Vermont. Um, there is one in the bank right now in the back foyer, but it's not ADA compliant because the handle is six feet off the ground. And the wall is a sloping brick wall. So we're out of compliance for accessibility for the customers. So we want to install this one on the north side of the building and the location where we want to put it. That's the only place that has a sidewalk that's big enough to meet the turning radius of the wheelchair. And fortunately for us, behind that panel is the vault room behind the teller line. So it's a secure place for 
the employees to empty the vault um, because you know they come in the morning they're going to be taking the money out of it and that's already a secure space um, so that's what we have okay so the, the the details of the installation then are that it's going to look like this look, night drop at another bank yeah, that, that stainless steel vault is going to be in that panel that's highlighted in the other picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, this I see this the stainless steel vault, and then there's this. Uh, that was just wood trim we had to trim. put on to make it work there, but it's going to have the same. We're hoping just to cut a hole in the panel okay. of the outside of the building, and you'll only see the stainless steel. Okay. It's possible it could go down to the brick a little bit. I'm not sure. We're gonna. I think we're gonna be just in the panel, but it might come down to the brick a little bit. We we have to make sure that I think it's a 48 inch maximum off the exterior surface of the handle. So you want to definitely double check ADA on the, the yeah it has, the handle that's location. Good. Yep. It can't be any more than 48. Right. And there is a little light on there, but really it's just a night night light that just says a, uh, you know, deposit the depository. That's all it is. Just kind of glows mm -hmm. for people at night that come in to make their deposits. Okay, thank you, Pat or Karen. Any thoughts to share? Questions for JD Ross. Um, I think I I like the fact that it's going to be just the stainless steel. And uh, yes, I, I think it's, it, it will, I have no objections. And, and I would agree with Karen. Um, I have no objections. It's a necessity um, to meet ADA standards. And um, I think we're familiar with seeing these night drop boxes at banks. So um, I, I'm not sure that it makes a big change to the facade of the building. But the fact that it's a necessity is important for us to consider. I would agree with you both. Um, my only request is that the box be aligned with the center of this panel. I don't know that I can do that. Oh. Yep, I see it. It's just where you drew it. It looked like it was... Yeah, I, I know, but well, inside that panel, there's another vault in there that has to fit in. It's the wall thickness, so I'll do the best I can to to try to get it in the middle of the panel. But I can't guarantee that it's. I have the vault. I think is like twenty four or twenty six inches wide, and I have a hole inside that's like thirty inches to fit it into. Sure. Okay. Uh, so I'll I'll do the best that I can to center, but I can't guarantee it because obviously right. I would like to center as well. Good. Okay. We're I, I, a lot of, I have a lot of constraints inside of making this thing fit where it's got to fit. Yeah. Okay. So how about if you can't center it, the alternative would be to make sure that it's aligned with the seam so that the edge aligns with the seam of the metal panels so that at least it's intentional. Of, yeah, I'll do the best that I can. Yeah. So symmetry is what we're talking about. Symmetry or alignment with something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, well the issue that we have is that that, that panel there you have the wall thickness, the side panel behind my friend there. Yeah. So that's going to eat up a chunk of that. And then I have to fit the vault in there. Um, it's not going to be centered in the middle of the panel, but I can make it aligned so yeah. it's not could, crooked. Could you, yeah, definitely align it? Because we already have the issue of the multiple colors of metal panel and the, the m and not being centered. And we've been around it on this, on this facade and... It, everything is kind of a little out of out of order up there. <laughs> it's nice. It to is. Have, have they've, I'm just a contractor for the bank that does stuff for them, so they've dumped it on me that they they need to make it in compliance for handicap accessibility for their customers, and this is where they want to put it. I, I all of that makes sense. Not, yep. There's not, there's not. I'm sorry. There's not much I can do to change the location other than try to do a good job and, and fit and finish and make it aligned and plumb level and square. That's all. Just the best that I can. Sounds great. All right. A motion then to um, approve with the recommendation that the box, the night drop box, be aligned with the seam if possible. 
So I I make the motion as stated. Thank you. Karen, I second. Would, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you for coming and sharing your thank you, folks. Project and All hopefully right. we get you out in time for your own meeting. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Bye. Okay. And next up, last but not least, is the town of Amherst. Talking again about the Portland Blue. Is um, Liz Larson associated with this project? The Portland Blue? Because I was no. asked by um, oh. Bob Parent to step into his shoes and um talk about this for the town so well um, let's pause for a minute just to see if liz is here as a member of the public and has a comment for us i am attending as the interim executive director of the amherst business improvement district that is the capacity that i'm in joining your meeting great okay so just listening in then all right then chris take it away Okay, so um, share, I suppose. So Bob Parent, who originally presented this to you um, in April, wasn't able to attend because he's out in Michigan, I think, visiting his daughter, and he asked me to stand in for him. Um, and there were a number of things that were brought up about this project. Um, I don't have a anything to share, so if Erica has uh, the ability to share, that would be good. I can um, do that. Yeah. I think you have a copy of Bob Parent's memo. It's part of the packet. Yeah, let's see. So I've got, um, there's this document, which I think we've seen before, which is the kind of architectural drawings. Then there's this uh, image of the site. Mm -hmm. And then we've got uh, this document, which he had shared before with images of the product. And then we have his memo. Um, that also contains some images of this product in other places. Mm -hmm. So where would you like me to be on my, uh, with this? Well, screen? let's see. Um, why don't we look at the color options? Because that's the first thing that he has in his um, memo. And he did investigate um, whether there could be a color change from the gray and discovered that, yes, uh, you could choose a custom color. He's showing... I think two custom colors here, this kind of rust brown color and a kind of a beige sand color. Um, but I think that there are also other colors that would be possible. So that is something that the um, DRB could make a recommendation about. Um, now he's also uh, noted that the Portland Lou decal that appeared on some of the material that you saw the past in the past doesn't need to be on the on the structure. In fact, I think it doesn't, the structure doesn't even come with that decal anymore. Um, but there are other things that could be um, wrapped around the structure, such as the images that you're seeing now. Um, I don't think that anything has been chosen to be um, proposed, but you could make some suggestions about that if you felt that was important. Um, and it looks like we can deck and then, out, deck out the interior. <laughs> inside, right. I know it's very exciting. It might be a little unnerving, though, to be in there <laughs> with all that going on. But uh, that's not for me to say. Right. Um, so those are the options for uh, the aesthetics. Um, then there was a question about whether this could be uh, a hybrid photovoltaic um, connection. And he says that, yes, it can be. Um, even though there are some trees in the vicinity, he feels that the trees would not shade the structure uh, for the full day, just perhaps for part of the day. So solar power would be um, usable, but perhaps not oh. usable all the time, um, just uh, par it, because it's partially shaded. So um, yes, we could be looking at a hybrid uh, bat uh, battery powered um, structure. And I guess you need that for the lights. And I'm not sure what else um, you would need power for, but it is possible to have the hybrid um, electrical. And then um, the question of the park location. I think that Bob 
spoke with other people in town who are, um, you know, proposing this. And the best location is really near the sidewalk, near the parking, um, near the entrance to the uh, playground, but not actually in the playground. Um, so you can see where there's a crosswalk that comes from McClellan Street, and then there's a sidewalk that runs along um, the east side of North Pleasant Street. And where those bubbles are, uh, the little bubbled sort of gray area, that's all going to be parking eventually. Um, so when you get out of your car or when you're walking towards the park, it might be nice to have a restroom um, right there near the entry. Um, and then if you're with your children in the playground, it would be easy, easily accessible from there as well. Um, so it seemed like a good location from those varying uh, points of view. Um, he's not really proposing an alternative location. That's the location that he's proposing. Um, and he, what he says is it's functional without encroaching on the park open space and potential for future park improvements. So in other words, it doesn't take the place of anything else that the town might want to do in the park. Um, and he also notes if the structure needs to be relocated in the future, it could be relocated. So I think that's um, that's the extent of what I know, but you can ask questions and maybe I can either, maybe I would know the answer or I can find out the answer. Okay. I'm just curious what the co ahead. color palette, you know, is there, is is there available the choices of color? And given that it's in a park in downtown Amherst, what color would be um, compatible? I have a similar question because he suggested that there are other colors, but didn't identify them. I'm trying to go back to his memo. And I, I have- this is Color and finish selections can be customized to a particular purchaser's preference mm -hmm. for an additional fee. So that indicates to me that there would be many colors available. You just need to select one, uh, choose one, choose a color that you think is appropriate, and then um, tell Bob that that's the color that you choose. Thanks for that clarification, Chris. I think it would be important to bring those choices to this board if, so that we can make some recommendation or suggestion as to what might fit best in that park. No, knowing that infinite colors exist, you're <laughs> saying they should do the first pass. I mean, we've got the 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 char kind of charcoal gray, the 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 deep gray, and it seems right. like an alternative. It's not likely to be anything, right? It would probably be a forest green or um, black to match the street lights. Um, it and could potentially be a color that would be compatible with the playground. I think yeah. the playground has um, a green, it has a kind of a beige color, and it may also have a brown. Yeah. So I, I, I would be yeah. interested to know what the choices are sooner yeah. than later, because I think this is, a, you know, decisions need to be made in a timely basis. I think adding color makes it a lot more attractive. And I agree, I think. I thought immediately of green, that uh, dusky brown red was also much more attractive, I thought, than the than the gray. And then the panels having, you know, something very artistic on the side, that's also a lovely idea, I think. I don't know how we would keep it from getting maybe hopefully not spray painted or vandalized or anything, but um, I, I think then it could be much more attractive if we chose a color like green and then maybe had a very simple, either nothing or just some kind of, a, 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 we could even have a competition which design panels could go on there. I'm oh, not sure that it, hosting a competition is within the purview of the design review board, but I true. appreciate <laughs> the suggestion. <laughs> I think true. right now we're not in a position to 
to because we're not there's no, no there's no the panels to gauge um right and i think that the the impulse that i have is to allow this to disappear for now um and so some kind of darker neutral color that wouldn't be an attractive color background for tagging um would be my vote uh although i hear pat and would like the town to come to us with a with a color suggestion like i have the green of the playground in in my mind but i'm not sure if it's accurate um right well green green would be for some part of the year would be the foliage color in the park and so i i agree with karen green was something i had in my head when I asked for choices, we don't need a whole color palette. We we need to see what the possibilities are. But but I think, you know, it's a park. So green would be appropriate. Yeah. And and um uh, it's not our purview to say how it's decorated, but but um it could be it, it might just be better, but it's not. So it doesn't invite, you know, future future artists to apply their their paint yeah well i will say the town has had a great had great luck with the electric box painting effort i don't know what that was like administratively but you know should that come up in the future we could be a part of that conversation but for now right for now right. um so i'm appreciative that there we we know that it will be branded with portland blue uh we haven't seen the signage for the restroom itself and we've seen plenty of those in these examples um but even these you know some of them are bright blue and others are gray i'm looking at the, the little restroom sign so i know that there's a timeline on this project but again i feel like we just we're still short of the information that we need to to make a decision Unless, unless board, we were willing to say that we like it in the gray that's been presented to us. If we're willing to approve it in the gray that's been presented to us, we could approve it tonight, but otherwise I'm not hearing enough. I'm here, I'm hearing from you both and I agree with you that there's not enough information to move this forward. And and I don't know that we need to delay it unnecessarily. Um, the gray is is to me is is innocuous, is but it's very utilitarian. And we're talking about a park where there's a children's playground in the center of town. And um, is that the right color, or do we need a, a leaf green, a forest green, um, to? to blend in more with the fact that it's a park. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, we could approve if, if they're in a time uh, rush, I think we could approve it and say, um, we recommend green, forest green, or we would like to see forest green and they could show us the different greens and that could go very fast, I would think, if we agreed on green. I'm not yeah I'm not keen on the gray I'm not keen on the keen on the rust and I'm not keen on the sand color um and so that that makes sense Karen if if we could move ahead but have the color choices proposed to us mm -hmm. we can bring the color choice back next time which I think would be the third week in June is that right I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just want to clarify or kind of circle back to a couple of other things that we asked um, Bob to look into. And, and he did come back. He said we asked him to explore alternative locations. Um, and he's affirming that this is the location that works the best for the town. Um, and it works. I think it's a fine location. I think that its accessibility to the playground is nice. I think that it's not being directly on the um, 
kind of primary street is 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 good. It's accessible. It's near parking. Um, he did also do the research and look into the solar and hybrid question. So I'm appreciative of that and glad to hear that solar is a go. Um, and we asked for a render, but didn't see that, you know, like it, to, to see a mock-up of what it would look like in the location. We, we, we didn't see that, but we're able to use our imagination. So that's okay. Um, were there any other concerns that were raised the, in the previous meeting that weren't addressed tonight for you both? I think they've been addressed, Erica. Okay. Um, I, I think I think the utilitarian gray is Karen and I are both thinking that that doesn't fit. Yeah, I, I agree said. with you. I agree yeah. with you. So we need to figure out um we are not approving it, right? We're approving the the location, the response to the other questions, but we need to see this project again. And I would add that I'd like to see the since they do have to come back, I would add that I'd like to see the the signage for the restroom itself and mm -hmm. no uh, background color that we'll have to so that it doesn't stand out. Right. Visible, accessible, but is, is there appropriate? I, I know that Amherst is working on signage for various things, parking, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is there a color that Amherst is using for those signs? And would that, that be appropriate for this? Those signs are um, actually in place and they are, let's see, there's a green, there's a blue, there's a, a sort of a dark, like maroon color. There's a mustard color. Um, I don't know if those would be suitable here. The green is very bright and mm -hmm. you probably are looking for a more subtle green. And the other colors don't really seem appropriate in my but, mind. Yeah. And the white on the mustard is. No, it's terrible. We're going to fix that. Problematic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we so, have some money to fix that. That's great. I, I would suggest we take a look at what, what signage we're using for other purposes and find one that would suit this purpose. Yeah, I don't think it's. I think it's fine to get something that coordinates. I'm looking, I'm just looking at the street view to see if the playground is in the Kendrick Park Google view, but it doesn't, it's not there. Google hasn't caught up with us. I was going to say, like maybe match the playground green as one option and then other right. forest greens. So well. there's some consistency of color within yeah. within the park is yeah. would be my suggestion. Agreed. Okay. So then um, I, don't even, I don't want to even try the motion. Does anybody want to put together a motion for, for our recommendations for the town? Well, the motion would accept the plan for the, for the loo um, with a, a, a change with, with review of the color options for Kendrick Park and also review of this signage for the loop in Kendrick Park. And Erica, add whatever else you think we need to this. I think that does it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I second. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's everyone. Thank you. Thanks, yes, I appreciate your, and I appreciate Bob's returning with more information and thank him for us, please. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we're moving on then to meeting minutes from the previous meeting and now I can't find them, so many tabs. Agenda, oh no. They were in the packet. They were definitely in the packet. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but there's just a lot of a lot of tabs. So let me. I thought they were in the packet. I'm sure. I I completely think they were. I just I must have accidentally closed that tab. So bear with me. Okay. 
So these are the minutes from our last meeting, which was April 29th. Mm -hmm. Pat and Karen, did you have an opportunity to review them or shall I do a slow scroll? Um, oh, I, I, I reviewed them, but a slow scroll is always a good idea. Okay. Yes. We started off with Paradise of India. And our recommendations were none. And then we talked about the Portland Loo, which we basically just revisited. So I think it looks good so far. Okay. Yeah, I I don't see any issues. Okay. We have some changes to the previous meeting. So if that's the case, then a motion to approve the minutes of April 29th. I approve the minutes of April 29th. And I second. Great. All in favor? Let's say aye. Aye. And Pat, was that your... Your, we, we took your approval as a motion. Would you? Are you voting yes? Yes. Okay. I'm voting. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and that's it on the agenda. Um, I had suggested to Chris that we would be willing to postpone further discussion on the DRB. Uh, re revisiting the DRB guidelines just because of this being a transition time in the planning department um, with with Rob's departure um, and in, out of respect for their overload. <laughs> and, uh, and then also um, Karen Blum is not uh, with us this evening, um, nor is Lindsay. And so with with hopes that that is all right with the two of you, I will just ask that we refresh our uh, memories of the DRB guidelines prior to the next meeting. I think Rob did include them in your packet, so you have ready access to them. We do. The no. suggested changes. So you'd like to put that on the agenda for next time? I would like to, yeah. Okay. Hoping that Summer is slow and that we have a quick agenda like we did this evening. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. That's okay. fine. Great. Thank you. So that's it. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Do you adjourn. want to say when your next meeting is? I think it would be the, tw uh, let's see, the third Monday in June would be the 17th. Is that a day that everybody can make it? Let's double check. Oh, and I think the restriction on the third Monday in, uh, in the month, it was Rob Boachilla who had a That's conflict. True. So That's you can true. choose whichever Monday you want. Right. Well, let's see. June 17th is on my calendar. Uh, does that work for you both, Pat and Karen? I think so. My calendar is missing at the moment, but oh, I I'm think it does. Yeah, I'm I'm planning to be gone the month of June. I'll be in Europe. I might be able to tune in, but I can't promise. Fair enough. So whether it's the third Monday or the second Monday won't change your plans. Doesn't matter. No. Okay. Well, um, yeah, if you choose to if you choose us over a cappuccino, we um will be deeply appreciative, but understand if you cannot. So it's June 17th at this moment in time. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We'll stick with June 17th if that works for, for everybody on the town side. And yep, if not, we could always do a, a poll or something. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, shall we adjourn? Yes. Thank so, you. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank nice you. Thank you. you.
拜拜。拜拜拜。